today we're going to be talking about municipal bonds and why they can make sense as an investment in a recession. And with us are Bob Demella, he's the executive managing director and co-head at McKay Municipal Managers, and also Build America Mutual's chief credit officer, Suzanne Finnegan. Thank you both so much for being here. And thank you everybody for coming into our breakout room. Uh, over on the side, you're going to see we have a poll question. It'd be great if you could take that. Uh, the question is, how have your clients changed their approach to their municipal portfolios in response to this year's losses. So if you take that, uh, that'll help inform our conversation here. Also put some questions in the chat and we will get to as many of those as possible. So uh, let's get to it. 2022 <laughs> somehow is coming to a close. Uh, it is December. Uh, Suzanne, first question to you. It's actually very rare to see a year of total return losses for municipal bonds. But through October, the market was down double digits. It's recovered a bit in the last few weeks. So how much of that was specific to the market? How much is broader issues, you know, just sort of all fixed income classes? And then I guess the big question is, like, is the worst over? <laughs> well, it's always hard to know when the worst is over. Um, I would say, you know, um, I think munis have been impacted um, by some credit concerns as a result of inflationary effects that we've seen in the market. Um, I think there's a lot more stability, um, but you can see blips um, as we go along the process. But I'd kick it back to Bob um, to say, I think you might have some insights on that topic, too. Yeah, I think... Um... Uh, listen, everybody fully understands exactly what's going on with the macro environment, with inflation, with the Federal Reserve doing what it's doing. Um, and there's just a, uh, for the first time in a very long period of time, a, a macro readjustment of beta rates, interest rate and duration risk in the marketplace. Um, and so fixed income securities are supposed to be down this year because of that very fact. We kind of think munis are supposed to be down, just not nearly as much as they are. The technicals have overwhelmed our marketplace. And this is this has been a sensitive issue in area of the municipal marketplace, quite honestly, going all the way back to the financial crisis of 2008, Jen, where you have the banks that have largely left the marketplace and their capital. And so the intermediation or actually a disintermediation of the marketplace has caused significantly drop in liquidity and increase in volatility and therefore price velocity. And that really showed up in 2022 when you had over a hundred billion dollars come out of these wrapped products, mutual funds, ETF, separate managed accounts, who buys those bonds? And so you literally have this huge pricing mechanism issue. So the technicals this year for the municipal marketplace, in our opinion, was just as strong, if not stronger than the macro fixed income uh, factors. So if the technicals were looking like that, what does it mean for investors sort of coming back to the market? What are you seeing in terms of indications of uh, strength there? So um, it's always painful when you're going through this type of adjustment. Uh, most investors in the marketplace, both municipal and general fixed income, haven't seen this, by the way. I've been managing municipal bond portfolios for over 30 years. This is by far one of the worst years that I have seen since I've been managing money. So most have not seen this. So the opportunity of very, very attractive incomes comes from a repricing of general rate marketplace this year. And so while a lot of clients have been asking us and Claire can el elaborate on this from a credit perspective later on, why are munis down so much? Is there a systemic problem, fundamental credit problem in your marketplace? And if not, am I staring at a really good opportunity to kind of get reinvolved in the marketplace that a lot of clients didn't do individually on their own for a long period of time? Income is attainable. You don't have to stretch for credit. You don't have to stretch for duration. It's kind of easier to attain. And so, and eventually that's going to be very healthy for clients as we going into 2023 um, you know, it's really going to help whether you're pulling the income as a pensioner or you're actually just allowing it to reinvest in a diversified portfolio. Um, Suzanne, I mean, as Bob really laid out, this is uh, a market that 
not a lot of people have uh, experience with. It is a challenging one. So as investors are shifting, um, talking about that risk of inflation that's really been top of mind to the risk of possible recession, mm -hmm. what is the outlook for municipal bond credit quality? And look, I mean, part of this interesting market that we're in is we've just come out of a <laughs> pandemic, right? And so how did, how did borrowers hold up through the pandemic? And then what's quality looking like in terms mm -hmm. of credit quality outlook right now? Well, I, you know, it's interesting. I mean, municipal bonds credit quality was remarkably stable during the pandemic. And I think there were a couple of reasons for that. First, um, most municipalities enter the pandemic period with pretty strong balance sheets and a fair amount of cash. Um, they also were benefiting from an extremely low interest rate environment, which allowed them to borrow at very low rates. Um, and, you know, that is a, you know, a definite benefit. Um, the other uh, things I think were that property values actually remain stable and in many markets increased as people sort of rethought where they worked and what their workplace should look like. Um, so since property taxes are the main driver of most municipalities' revenue stream, that was a real stabilization factor. Um, sales tax receipts stayed strong. And of course, we had a substantial amount of federal aid coming into the municipalities. So as we went through COVID, um, most municipal credits were very strong. I would say one, uh, I wanted to also reemphasize something else that Bob said, which is that while municipals are generally considered to be a very safe asset class, there is a lot of ratings volatility possible. The default rates are extremely low. So preservation of principle is not really a concern, but because the bonds are very long and there are so many different <laughs> issuers, um, rate uh, the ratings volatility exists and um, that can impact the pricing and the valuations on your portfolio. Um, that is one of the benefits to bond insurance besides covering um, the principal and interest repayment. It also helps to maintain a stable rating level as the bond issues we insure get our rating. Um, I think in terms of what's happening now with inflation, you know, projects that were in progress for most municipalities, we're seeing people having to come back to the market with more bonds to cover additional costs, increased costs of goods, um, and also um, fuel and other costs are, are impacting budgets and balance sheets. Um, I would say that as we think about a potential recession, we're in a very different place now than we were in 2009. Unemployment rate below 4% compared to over 9%. Um, even though interest rates are ticking up, they're still relatively low. Um, and I think the interest rates increase. One other big difference is back in 09, we had a lot of homeowners who were in adjustable rate mortgage products. And as interest rates rose, that impacted their ability to pay. So I think we're in a very different place than we were in the prior recession. Um, Bob, I want to talk about um, who munis are a good investment tool for, but I want to remind the audience, please jump in the chat, ask some questions. This is a, really an opportunity for you. You can ask um, either Bob or Suzanne questions. We also have the poll. I want to check in on that because we do have a bunch of votes in there. Uh, how have your clients changed their approach to their municipal portfolios in response to this year's losses? And uh, the, uh, the favorite here is no changes. No changes yet. I don't know if you find that surprising. We've got um, the second is uh, around 30 percent have added more munis at higher yields, yields, but over just over 40 percent have made no changes. So that brings me to this is an investment tool, right? I mean, who are munis for as an investment tool, Bob, and why should investors be considering them right now, especially as we've unpacked what's happening right now. I mean, we all know about rising rates. People are looking into next year, concerned about what the, con uh, the economy is going to be looking like. Do you think that makes them more or less enticing for people? 
Yeah, I think I think at the end of the day, from a historical perspective, there's always been a little bit of a misconception about the the value of municipal bonds, who owns them. Um, it's been historically thought of just the wealthy, just the higher tax brackets own them. And clearly that is a huge advantage from a tax advantaged asset class. But literally, it doesn't really matter what asset class, uh, what tax bracket you're actually in. They add significant value. Um, as Suzanne, Suzanne had mentioned, um, you don't really have an over a great degree of default risk in the municipal marketplace, but you have some ratings volatility. And so that insurance wrapper she talked about clearly adds a lot of value. It also adds liquidity in a marketplace. But if you really take a step back and think about the income stream you're attainable, you're attaining in a very you know solid category. Um, that is a significant benefit to clients, regardless of their tax bracket. In addition to that, we used to trade significantly lowering yields in the treasury marketplace. Why? Because we're tax exempt. Since the great financial crisis, we have almost for most part, except for a couple of cases, been trading in parity with the treasury marketplace. Think about that for a second. You're getting a high quality tax exempt municipal bond at the same yield or income stream as a taxable product. And so therefore, your after-tax benefits, your tax equivalency of other type of fixed income categories is very, very attractive. These are all the different elements that most clients don't really think about. And so it's not just for the wealthy. It literally doesn't matter what tax bracket you're in. It's great diversification. It's great ballast. And I would even argue for the first time in about 15 years, it's really, really attractive income stream from the short end of the yield curve all the way through the long end. And so it's it's pretty compelling um, whether clients are taking the income stream or they're reinvesting it over time. Uh, Suzanne, I want to get your thoughts because uh, as we've discussed, I mean, municipal bonds are unique because those interest payments are tax exempt. So how should investors be thinking about that given the possibility of recession? Are those more valuable during a recession? What's the calculation there? Well, you know, it's, it's a good question. I think, um, you know, most states... Um, generate the vast majority of their revenues from income taxes and sales taxes, where actually municipalities, cities, and counties generate more of their revenue from property taxes. Um, when you get into a recessionary environment, municipalities and states can make some budget cuts to balance their budgets, but to the extent that a significant amount of revenue is coming from income taxes, what you might see happening is states increasing their tax rates. And there are a number of local governments who also use income tax. And you might see them adjusting those tax rates to fill these budget shortfalls, um, which can arise in a recessionary environment. Um, you know, there are some certain core services that have to be provided and they have a certain price tag associated with them. And in an increasing income tax uh, rate environment, I think you might see that the value of munis increases. And Bob, you know, as Bob pointed out, it's not only about the tax exemption, but it definitely plays a role. It certainly plays a role, and especially in um, you know high tax states and and mm -hmm. and cities as well. I'm sitting here in New York City. Uh, so, uh, Bob, how should investors consider getting started? So, if, if you've if you're want to make that move, what are the best options for actually just getting into the market? Well, if you're going to start into the market, please, there's a lot of great, uh, simple, easy solutions. There are there are mutual funds. Um, it's liquid enough for clients to get in and out of it on a daily basis. Um, they're priced on a daily basis. So you don't have to worry about the mechanics of that. Um, income stream is very attractive. Again, on a monthly, you know, pulling the income out or reinvesting it again. You have ETFs. Um, you have ETFs in the municipal marketplace, some better than others. I'm an active money manager. I will tell clients to lean toward more of active strategies in the municipal marketplace because as Suzanne had pointed out, um, it's a solid credit worthy asset class, but there's a lot of volatility and issues and inefficiencies that happen in the municipal marketplace. Any asset class that's inefficient in my opinion and our opinion has a great opportunity from an active approach. So you have mutual funds, ETFs, um, individual bonds and separate managed accounts are I think the later step, you know, they tend to be for larger allocations for clients um, because it's not like the stock market. You can't go and just hit the exchange and buy a share, you know, mm -hmm. buying smaller pieces of bonds and building a diversified portfolio yourself. 
um, tends to take a lot longer. Not that you know clients can't get there, but I think SMAs uh, and ETF, uh, not SMAs, and mutual funds and ETFs are pretty easy for clients to just enter that space. So Suzanne, against the backdrop of all of this, it's kind of interesting, just the mission of the market, which is to build infrastructure. And right now, um, it, it we've had, we've talked about, remember when we talked about infrastructure week for like years in a, in a row, but um, <laughs> the, the role is kind of changing, I guess. We've got the, the results of the, the federal infrastructure law. Um, is more happening now? Is that just uh, what people have read and that's not actually the case? I mean, like how this mission and what we have going forward, uh, mm -hmm. what's ahead? Well, you know, municipalities um, provide the core infrastructure at the local level, and they have a very long history of partnering with other local entities and states to provide regional infrastructure solutions. Historically, we've had very strong presence of federal and local partnerships for water um, infrastructure, as well as for transportation. But the new um, law, I think, broadens the scope of projects that are available, um, the amount of funding that's available. Um, it has some terms and conditions that municipalities will have to learn um, to uh, get the best access. But I think the one of the key points is that this new partnership arrangement um, is really um, much of the money is focused on matching funds. And so the local governments are going to have to come up with their proportionate share. And I think that's a real opportunity um, in the marketplace as a whole. We'll see a lot of high quality issuers, I think, coming to market to fund their local share. And um, I think it's going to really um, boost the overall program. I think, you know, the amount of money that's available is really substantial. And the types of projects that are going to be done will be able to be financed with tax exempt debt. Bob, you're nodding your head a little bit there when you're talking about the matching and going forward. So I guess you agree this is a, an opportunity here? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity. I think, um, you know, infrastructure, as Suzanne had pointed out, uh, so infrastructure investing has been, it's, it's a mature investment strategy throughout the world, um, but it's just different in different parts of the world. You know, European clients, um, Asian clients do it normally in private type of structures um, in the United States, it's funded in the municipal bond marketplace. So it's not, it's, it hasn't been as sexy as an investment strategy as infrastructure play it now, but, but this is why there's such huge demand, um, uh, and resiliency in the municipal marketplace. Investors like knowing they're investing and supporting their local school district, water and sewer, hospital, toll road. They like looking through their portfolios if they have one and seeing a local name in there and saying, okay, I know where my dollars are. I know the credit worthiness of the local school district. And they get a lot of value out of that as well, in addition to that tax exempt income. And so they've kind of gotten it for a long time. And so, yeah, the municipal marketplace is an infrastructure play. And so hopefully over time, and with uh, some of the new policy changes, we increase more um, public and private kind of equity and debt coming in and joining uh, state and local governments and the federal government to uh, bringing our whole infrastructure framework uh, um, up to speed. Um, just a couple minutes left. Last question for both of you. And Suzanne, we can start with you. I, let's just leave people with this. I mean, what should advisors be thinking about or articulating to clients as they strategize investing in munis in next, for the next year? I think diversification in your portfolio is really key. Um, I think that provides a fair amount of protection against volatility. Um, there are hundreds of thousands of issuers in the municipal market, so it's easy to build a diverse portfolio. Um, and I would stick um, to the level of uh, credit risk that an individual person is comfortable with. You know, there is a high yield segment of the municipal market that is definitely not for everybody. Um, but there are very low risk opportunities out there that I think would make most investors quite happy. 
guess what, Bob? You get a question out of the chat. We're going to squeeze it in. Alex just asked in here, could you explain the benefits of investing in a municipal bond ETF and mutual funds in a rising interest rate environment? When possible, we have been trying to solely invest in our clients in individual bonds and less so in funds due to the perceived continued loss. Would you recommend a change in strategy? So that's it's it's a great question from Alex, and we've had a lot of conversations with clients for the last 15 years or so. We have been advocating clients not to do individual bonds because that part of the yield curve, when clients invest in the municipal marketplace, they tend to be inside of 10 years and there was no income in that part of the yield curve. And you were taking on interest rate risk um, for a very long period of time for no income. You never buy a bond where you don't have enough income to offset the interest rate risk you're taking on, let alone credit risk, as Suzanne had pointed out several times. Now this current environment is different. Now all of a sudden, mutual funds and ETFs, which I talked about, now have to compete with individual bonds because individual bonds for the first time in 15 years have really attractive income streams. So I, when I talked about first getting into the marketplace, I think mutual funds and ETFs make a lot of sense. Or if you're a wealthy client, you have a like a sub more substantial amount that can allocate into munis. You and your advisor can absolutely put together your own portfolio because you can attain a very attractive income stream for the first time in 15 years. However, if you have an active money manager in either an ETF or a mutual fund, they have harvested losses in those portfolios. They have turned those portfolios over so that those distribution yields and book yields have actually caught up to the marketplace. If those other wrappers, mutual funds and ETFs have not done that, then I emphatically agree with Alex that you're not supposed to do it. Go individual bond route or SMA yourself because the mutual funds that are lagging with working on restructuring their portfolios because we were in an ultra low environment. So he's spot on with that. The rising rate environment um, can be advantageous in both type of wrappers. But make sure your money manager is actually paying attention to that. One other thing to say with that, because the tail end of his head has a question on this. Mm -hmm. A lot of what's going on in the municipal marketplace in this year is temporary impairment, meaning dollar prices of bonds are down in separate managed accounts, individual bonds and, and mutual funds. The perception out there is, well, if I just hold on to my bonds, they're just going to mature to par over time because they're at a discount. The same thing happens with a mutual fund. They seem to think this temporary impairment is permanent in a mutual fund. Not sure why. I've had a lot of conversations about that. And so with the rising rate environment in a mutual fund that's compounding on a monthly basis, the rising rate environment actually works faster for clients, not slower. Thank you, Alex. Great question. Suzanne, did you have any thoughts on that that you wanted to chime in on? I think Bob has covered it all. <laughs> all right. So, Bob, we get to go back to the last question that I had had for Suzanne, which um, now you get to uh, get um, <laughs> because we squeezed Alex's in, um, okay. which is basically just what advisors should be thinking about and articulating to clients as they strategize for 2023. So um, we're not an interest rate calling shop. Um, if anybody comes to you and says they know where rates are going, stop converse, conversing with that person because no one does. Over the long term, no one does. There's so much value to be had and ways of actually making money for clients in the municipal marketplace. We can be relatively agnostic. Having said that, 2022, it's all about beta. It's all about rates. We do believe the lion's share of the problems are behind us. We have already adjusted to a significant degree with regards to the rate environment. We have been qualitying up our portfolios um, and because we like high yield. Suzanne said it's not for everybody. We have some clients and some products uh, for them. Um, we don't hate it, but we think with where the world is today, with what the Federal Reserve has to uh, accomplish, you've got to put a nod toward, well, the economy could be challenged. I'm not saying hard recession light reset, whatever. But, and so until credit spreads probably get a little more reasonable to us, we won't increase our allocation to high yield. So it's really prudent to us to actually pivot your portfolios to slightly higher credit quality. They're a very, very attractive light asset, light cycle asset class, i.e. read into that, a diversified fixed income portfolio, reduced corporates, increased munis, because that tends to hold up very, very well for clients. And you don't have to give up income to do it. That's the key in a bond market strategy. Always focus on the income. 
All right. That is all the time we have. Thank you, Susanna and Bob, for being here. Uh, Build America Mutual, thank you so much. Uh, and of course, thank you to all of you for joining us.